We are here at the Beef Cattle Short Course in Texas A&M with Dr. James McGran, a good friend of mine and uh, one of the leading authorities in the world in economics, as, uh, especially when it's livestock related. Uh, we've done some work with Dr. James McGran and the economics of using sex semen, and that's uh, what we want to talk about today. Well, thank you, Gustavo, for the opportunity. Um, as you know, I, I look at things from a business and economic perspective, and, and we've done some, some work with the sex semen. And really, I think that when a person is making a decision about it, they really have to look at uh, three different things. The major thing is, is what's the difference in the gender value between the, the bull or heifer or steer and heifer. And, and, that, and that will tell you a good deal of what you can afford to, to pay for for the sex semen and our numbers show if you can get hundred and fifty dollars difference you pretty well have a an opportunity where it's economically feasible the second thing is is we have to put the breeding cost into perspective after the the rain comes and we're looking at replacements we're probably going to be looking at uh, bread replacements that will be somewhere between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars and if you look at the breeding cost that's a very small part of their total cost and of course the semen even is a lower cost. So it's, and then the third thing is it, it's really, it's management intensive. In other words, anything this, that does with uh, artificial insemination is going to have to be very done very, very well. But taking care of those three factors, it's a relatively straightforward uh, decision. You, you brought to us one point that uh, since you start being involved in analyzing the economics that in this technology, what we need to emphasize is the return on investment. We know that it has a little bit higher cost to start with and some other implications. Uh, you reduce some of the conception rate, you increase a little bit of your cost on the input, but the return on investment is very high. You develop some spreadsheets for us that we have in the, in the website that you can use to calculate that. Give us your insights of how you come up with those numbers and how you see that in the application in the industry. Basically, it's, it's pretty straightforward, again, because we're looking at the additional cost of the alternative breeding system, and then we're looking at what the value difference is when we actually make that extra expense, and then we look at the return on investment. So it's the additional revenue that's generated by having this gender difference against the added cost of using the sex scene. And like you always said, when you do that, UAI, and then the cleanup bull will make up for that difference so at the end you will have the same number of calves you will have more calves of the I think that's, added value. <coughs> that's there. important because the users have to understand they still don't have to sacrifice the overall pregnancy rate and, and calf crop when they use the AI or the sex scene. What do you think needs to be the step in an environment like this is a beef cattle short course a good crowd uh, to, incent uh, to stimulate the beef producers to do more AI and to do the use of the biotechnologies that can make them be profitable or not profitable in their operations? Well, the first thing, if you're a seed stock producer, you're going to have to be competitive. You're going to have to do AI work and, you, and the sex semen really offers you an alternative. So there's no question the seed stock. On the commercial scale, <clears throat> it's probably for the larger producers that produce quite a few replacement heifers and they have select cows that they want to produce those from and that way they can get a higher percentage of uh, heifers and, and then if you turn around and breed those heifers to sex semen well then you're going to sell a replacement heifer plus bred back and so you really have a, a tremendous asset for the that could be purchased by a smaller producer or used to build a herd uh, a commercial herd yeah uh, we've seen different operations in different countries you've been involved in many countries and operations of different sizes around the world. How you see that technology changing the international markets and how they use different breeds to produce the product that the world wants? It's, it's really incredible over my uh, professional life how, how uh, technologies and the semen genetics can move internationally. At, at one time, you had to ship bulls. Uh, when I was in Argentina in the 70s, they, the King Ranch was shipping bulls to Argentina. 
Now everything is transported either through uh, semen or embryos. And so the movement of this technology, and I was in Australia, you go to a, an Australian show and, and here's the primary breeders in the United States are, they have the semen available there. So these, uh, the, the genetics, genetics are moving very, very uh, quickly internationally, low cost. And, uh, and there can be tremendous genetic progress when you can, you can have this kind of movement of uh, higher powered genetics across the world. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here and thank you for your words about our technology and how we can improve the livestock industry through the use of biotechnology. Thank you, Mr.